Hey, what's up? Quattro here and today we're going to be taking a look at how to set up the blueprints for car modeling or pretty much any other modeling for 3ds Max. Now I do have to say that this will work in any other 3D application but I have 3ds Max 2012 and that's what I'm going to be using for today's lesson. So here we are in Photoshop and I, I already have my blueprint imported it's a Lamborghini Gallardo and we're gonna cut it up into pieces and then import those pieces into 3ds Max and I'm gonna show you how to uh, set uh, different viewing modes so to speak for your blueprints so let's get started so first off I'm gonna cut uh, all the pieces out now to make this process easier uh, if you're in Photoshop make sure you have your rulers on uh, de they're on by def default so you shouldn't have any problems with that but if you don't I think yeah view rulers so make sure that's on uh, it's gonna make your life way easier so first off if you click and drag on the ruler you can actually drag out this um, grid thing that will help you uh, in the future so we're gonna align these with our with the extremities of our blueprint. If you hold control you can move them if you actually make a mistake. So we're gonna align them with our blueprint here. Um, drag another one. There we go. This could be a little bit tedious but it'll pay off in the end. Uh, there we go. And then go to the next one. So basically this is the first step to basically just take all the extremities. Now also these grid lines will help you determine if your blueprint is aligned properly. For example I can see that my mirror extremities line up here but don't really line up that well here. Well that's acceptable but you can always go and fix that uh, but I'll leave that for another day well but you should know because, uh, that for modeling you would want your blueprints to be um, very precise so I'm gonna just align all this stuff here quickly hopefully not take too long I'm gonna let's go remove that. Move that a little bit. Create the new one here. There we go. And two last ones for the mirrors here. So basically, this is the first step. Like we said, just drag out the grid lines. Now this is where the fun begins. I actually have my selection tool selected. Now if I click on the corner of our uh, intersection here you don't have to be too precise but as you, as you can see the selection snaps to my grid lines so this makes your life very easy. And then you just go to image, crop, control shift S for saving and I'm gonna save to my Gallardo and we're gonna say this is Gallard blueprint blueprint Gallardo Gallardo back and I'm gonna choose the PNG file format because I'm a lover of PNGs done now we're gonna go back to the full view we're gonna select another one again image crop Control shift s or file save as and we're gonna say this is Gallardo top save it save it go back as you can see this is very fast image crop Control shift s Gallardo front 
back. And I'm using the command Control Alt Z for going back. You can also go um, step backwards, edit step backwards. So Control Alt Z. That's what it does. Again, ta da! Image, crap. No, well, not crap, crop. Anyway, sorry. Control Shift S, Gallardo, side, save it. So, now that we have everything in place, let's go to 3ds Max. Now, how do we actually set this whole thing up? Well, uh, you can set it up as a viewport background, but that would require some specific um, preparations. First, you would have, you would uh, need your uh, blueprints specially prepared. You know, like uh, for example, if you want to model this on the grid line, you would have to have like the upper half of the blueprint uh, with the actual image and the lower half have the same amount of emptiness and all that stuff. So basically, uh, I'm gonna show you how to create um, planes and texture them. So basically, I'm gonna create easy as that. Now we're gonna go to my desktop, Gallardo, and we're gonna see the dimensions here which are 1997 times um, 1023. So I'm going to input that 1997 by 1023. And just for convenience, I'm going to zero out the transforms. Now I'm working in millimeters here, but this should translate the same in any other measurements. So, let's get the grid out. I'm pressing G to get the grids away. Now, to set up the materials, I'm gonna click M, or uh, the material slot, and we're gonna add a texture, bitmap, and we're gonna say Galar the top, open it up, and we're gonna apply the material, and make sure it shows in the viewport. So, instantly, we're having this nice view of our blueprint. However, in 3ds Max 2012, I'm getting this map mapping thing which I don't really like. So, how do we get rid of that? Well, first of all, we're gonna say material, show materials in viewport as realistic materials with maps. Um, in older 3ds Max versions, that should translate pretty much the same if you select uh, hardware shading with maps. I think that hardware display with maps, actually. Uh, now, I'm not sure if this would give you the exact same result, but as, as you can see, this gives me a very crisp, nice preview. So, this is one way that people prefer working with, and let's add realistic. There we go. Now, there's another thing that we can do. Uh, we can go to maps and actually copy this map to an opacity map. We're gonna swap it. It takes a while to load to uh, create the shader with the transparency. Ba but as it's done, you can actually see that my blackness uh, becomes transparent, which is interesting. Now, the thing is, I probably wouldn't want the black part to be um, to be transparent. I would want the whole whiteness to be transparent. So, how do I go and do that? Well, I go to our map, click on the bitmap, and load a color correction uh, filter. Keep old map as a submap. Uh, again, it will recompile the shaders for the display. And as soon as we're done, I'm going to click Invert. Wait a second for the shaders to recompile. Amazing. Now, as you can see, all my blackness has become transparent. And I'm only left with these sexy lines, which will not get in the way of modeling. Amazing. So... Uh, what else? If you wouldn't, if you don't like the gray color, you can actually, for example, pick a color you like. Let's see, green. Amazing. 
and let's set the self illumination to 100 that mean if we set the self illumination that means that our model will not get darker with the angle see so we're gonna get a crisp preview all the way through so that's one thing now you might want a two-sided preview so we're gonna just enable the two-sided uh, option on our shader again it's gonna recompile and done and done now one of the first problems you might encounter using this method is if you go to wireframe you're gonna have all these obnoxious lines here so how do we get rid of that well first of all we select the plane and make sure our length segments are one and width segments are also one so that leaves us with a bounding box but you probably don't want that either uh, so there's an easy way to get rid of that we're gonna take a custom color um, and we're gonna pick the viewport color that color whatever pick that color done so this is with shaded edges without with without so no difference in that incredible so uh, another thing you might want to do when modeling is you might want to change your background color because working on gray might not necessarily be convenient for some people you might want to work on bluish or black or white uh, we can go we can do that we can right click or actually in 3ds max 2012 you can just uh, left click and go to configure and we're gonna say use environment background color I'm gonna say okay uh, now if I press 8 or rendering environment uh, this dialog pops up and we have the environment color which is currently set to black um, so you can change that there again if you don't want the borders just click on black done and done very sexy so th and this does not affect the other viewport so you don't have to worry about that you can just model in peace um, what else um, you probably wouldn't want to accidentally move your blueprint so one of the things I uh, suggest is freezing it but also please check the show frozen in gray uh, actually uncheck it because if you don't uncheck it it's gonna show up as a gray plane and you don't really want that so just uncheck the fro show frozen gray freeze it done and done create your stuff without the fear of selecting the blueprint so now we're gonna create the other blueprints the same way we're gonna use angle snaps here and just turn this 90 degrees uh, make a copy move it um, now my width here is 1023 so I would probably want to move this half of that which is if I Let's see. Um, uh, isn't anything. Oh, anyway, uh, half of ten twenty three is actually five, five, twelve, five eleven point five. Oops, wrong measurement. Ta da. Am I right or am I wrong? Yes, I'm right. There we go. So, we're gonna take the side one and see it is 551 tall. So, we're gonna make it 551 tall. And we're gonna move it up half of 551 that's in Z and half of 551 if my math is not too rusty is 275.5 
At least it should be. Yeah. That is amazing. Whee! Anyway, so... Uh, now we're gonna set up a new material for the... We can just copy it. Change the name. Whatever. And just... Oops. Go to our maps and change the bitmap from top to side. And... Assign to object. Ta-da! Very pretty. And that is basically how you create all the other viewports that you may or may not have, because some blueprints you come in four views, some come in five, some come in just two, um, so it really depends on the blueprint, but basically you just gotta position the blueprints in a desired um, in a desired um, position and set up the materials and this is what you're gonna end up with pretty nice I'd say pretty nice so hopefully you've learned something in this tutorial and uh, um, yeah I think there's nothing more to add uh, well anyway hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial and probably you love me more now maybe not I don't know um, anyway so consider subscribing for more tutorials on 3ds max and after effects and possibly Photoshop I don't know uh, also be sure to check out my DeviantArt account and the link will be below and uh, we'll see you next time